Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. Currently, we are in Zechariah chapter 14. We are doing a slow crawl through this chapter because there are just a lot of <laughs> moving parts to understand, at least, to, at least for us to give a kind of a, a, a complete picture. Now, Prophecy, as I said before, or the study of eschatology, which is end times, is simple, but it's ex exhaustive. There's a lot that you should read, and and even here in my glossing over, I I'm gonna take, like I say, I wanna I wanna put some parts together so that we can move on. In this chapter of Zechariah, we get a vivid picture of the second coming of Jesus, and more so what he's going to do when he comes, okay? This is a part of the end time prophecy, the end time scenario. So what you have is we come up, so, G, so you have Jesus, and remember in Daniel chapter 9, the 70 week prophecy, you have from the issuing of the decree of Cyrus the king to go back and restore and build Jerusalem, which is the same time frame of Zechariah. They had been rebuilding the uh, exiles, those who had been deported from Israel and Jerusalem to Babylon. Well, after 70 years, God said that, okay, I, he would return them back to the land, but only a fraction went back. Zechariah was one of them. He was one of the prophets. Zechariah and Haggai was one of the prophets. So the prophecies now <coughs> are prophesied up to this point moving forward, which means, guess what? In the future, there's still yet trouble for Israel. All right. Daniel's prophecy prophesied of 70 weeks, which was issued when Cyrus issued the decree to go back and restore and build Jerusalem. You read about that in Ezra chapter one. There was the 70 week prophecy in which Daniel um, um, is given a prophetic timeline. Again, that started when Cyrus the king issued the, dec the decree to go back and restore and, re and rebuild Jerusalem. So in it, he said there were 70 weeks or 70 sets of seven year period of time. And then 69 of, the, of those weeks brought us to Jesus first coming. So his death, burial, and resurrection. So then there's one week left to be fulfilled. Now, some people think that this week was fulfilled in AD 70. I said, there's no way it could have been fulfilled in AD 70. So then once the week, the 70th week is fulfilled, so then you, you have this period of time. Now, this is the time period of the 70th week, the great tribulation period. This period of time when Jerusalem, when the armies and the world will come against Jerusalem. And then at the end of that period, Jesus comes back. We'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. Because that's what's being pictured here. Now, what's not being talked about is, where is the church in this prophecy? So kind of if we look at the prophecy, the 70-week prophecy, where are we at? So the 70-week prophecy... We, if you're looking at where, when this 70 week prophecy was given is doing the kingdom of the, per, the, per, the Persian kingdom. So 69 weeks brings us to Rome, the Roman empire during the first century. Okay. So now the 70th week is the week of the beasts. And we see that in, in Daniel. And um, actually, Daniel chapter 7, 8, and 9, in which you see this last 
kingdom in which in Daniel chapter 2 when this vision was given this image here Daniel the, the angel said doing the days of the kings of the feet and iron Jesus would come and set up a kingdom that would never be destroyed okay so prophetically right now we are between the legs of iron and the feet of clay prophetically which also mean, means that it brings us between week 69 and week 70. Now, in fairness, there are a lot of people who would disagree with that. Okay. All right. Now, so why such a long gap? When we talk about week 70 and week 69, why such a long gap? Now, I believe. <laughs> All right, and again, I'm going to take just a little time to deal with making my case. And, I'll, and let me say this too as I'm turning to our verses here. Um, I believe that it, it's an opinion. Um, there, when, when, you, when, you, when it comes to the church and then when the church is going to be removed from the earth, I, it's, it's, there is no exact scripture as to when the rapture is going to happen only that the rapture will happen but let me make my case quickly here all right so um now we know that 69 weeks brings us to let me just this is daniel chapter 9 again 69 weeks brings us verse 26 after 62 weeks the messiah will be cut off and have nothing. So we know that that brings us to that period of time. If you were living during the time of Jesus, you could have said, hey, guess what? We're we're at Daniel's week 69. You go down to verse 27. He says um, he will make a firm covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to the sacrifice. Um, let me go back and just kind of show you again um, and I am resisting to go, going deep into this because, again, this is something that uh, um, takes a lot more time, which we're not going to do. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, this is chapter 8. So, um... Look at verse 22. The four horns that took place of, of the shattered horn represented the four kingdoms. They were rise from the nation, but without its power. It's talking about the, um, again, the, the prophecy of which, when we saw the, the image. This is, this is um, Alexander the Great. Oh. Let's see here. Okay, look at this. I'm gonna I wanna show you where I'm looking at. Oh here it is. It, this this would be good here. Um so look at this here. Um verse nine says, uh from one of them a little horn grew. Okay, I wanna I want you to get the kind of full picture here. Uh verse nine from from one of them, a little horn, emerged and grew extensively towards the south and the east and towards the beautiful land. It grew as high as the heavenly host, made some of the stars and some of the hosts fall to the earth and trample them, it made itself great even up to the prince of the host. Now, look at this. It will remove his daily sacrifice and overthrew the place of his sanctuary because of rebellion, a host together with the daily sacrifice will be given over the horn, will, will throw truth to the ground, and would be successful in whatever it does. Then I heard the Holy One speaking, and another Holy One said to the speaker, How long will this event of this vision last? The daily sacrifice, the rebellion that makes desolate, and the giving over of the sanctuary, and the host to be trampled. He said, 23 evenings and mornings, 
and the sanctuary will be destroyed, uh, the restored. So the 2300 evenings is about seven, three and a half years. Okay. About three and a half years. All right. So um, look at chapter seven. Um, all right. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. I'm going to pick up a verse 19. He says, Then I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, the one different from all the others, extremely terrifying with iron teeth and bronze, bronze claws, devouring, crushing, and trampling with its feet, whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on his head and about the other horn that came up, before which three fell, the horn that had eyes, and his mouth spoke arrogantly, and that was more visible than the others. And as I was watching, this horn raged war against the holy ones and was prevailing over them until the Ancient of Days arrived and the judgment was given in favor of the Holy Ones of the Most High. For the time had come and the Holy Ones to take possession of the kingdom. By the way, this is talking about Israel. Okay. Verse 23. Then this is what he said. The fourth beast would be a fourth kingdom. Now, remember he's speaking from the Babylon, the Babylonian kingdom has it, it has kind of faded away already. So that's why it said instead of five kingdoms, he says four. He said the fourth beast would be a fourth kingdom on the earth, different from all the other kingdoms. It will devour the whole earth, trample it down, and crush it. The ten horns are ten, ten kings who will arise from this kingdom. Another, different from the previous one, will arise after them and subdue three kings. He will speak words against the Most High and oppress the holy ones of the Most High. He will, attend, he will intend to change religious festivals and laws, and the holy ones will be handed over to him for time and times and half a time. So there's that three and a half years, right? But the course will convene and its dominion will be taken away to be completely destroyed forever. The kingdom and dominions, the greatness of his kingdom are all, I mean, the greatness of his kingdom under all of heaven will be given to the people, the holy ones of the most high. His kingdoms will be an everlasting kingdom and all the rulers will serve and obey him. Now, the reason why I took the time to read this again is to kind of give you what is going on? So, and to, and Thessaly too, as for its prophecy, Daniel is a very progressive prophecy, giving us it goes beyond Israel. It is it talks about Israel, but it also remember talks globally. So this is here, it's exclusively talking about the prophecy of the beast and what is going to happen during the time of the beast. So obviously in Zechariah that we've already talked about this um, when he says, uh, right, that the day of the Lord is coming <coughs> and your plunder will be divided in your presence and I will gather all nations against Jerusalem for battle. The city will be captured, houses looted, and women raped. Now, notice he said the Holy One will be given over to this, this beast. Now, there's two verses I want to get into now, so we see this progression of prophecy, the 69, the 70 weeks. The 70th week is this week of the beast, okay? I want to talk about a couple of things, though, before. Uh, okay, so three verses I want to get into. One, John 14, and I'm going to run out of time. So John 14, I'll start with this and then pick it up. Again, in the next, in the next verse, um, but I think it's important too that we can fit fit some pieces of the puzzle together. But I want you to see this. 
Um, and this is John chapter 14, verse 1. Uh, Jesus, if this is the last supper, all right, so Jesus says, your heart must not be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If not, I would have told you, now get this, I am going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Now notice what he says here. I am going to prepare a place for you. Keep this in mind. This is the night of the his last night before he is arrested, right? Judas probably at this point is already left to bring the soldiers to arrest him. So my point is, he, he so now he, he he's telling them this. I'm going away in just a few short hours. He's going to be arrested, and then you're going to see it's what trial, mock trial, and then death, burial, and resurrection. But what does he tell them? I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And then notice this, notice this promise here. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself. I want to interject something here. This is not talking about the second coming of Jesus. Notice what he says. I'm coming back to receive you. So when you look at the term here, I will come back. And when it comes to prophecy, I always like to pay attention to the details. Okay. So I want to read one more. And I'm, gonna, I'm not through with this because, again, I'm running out of time. But First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So look at verse 13. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, concerning those who are asleep, so that you will not be grieved like the rest who have no hope, since we believe that Jesus died and rose again. In the same way, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. Okay, now, this is not talking about the second coming of Jesus. Pay attention to the details. For this we say to you by revelation of the Lord, we who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly have no advantage over those who have fallen asleep. Now, stop for a moment because again, the Lord's coming is this talking about the second coming? No, let's pay attention to the details. Remember Jesus said that I will come and receive you to myself, right? I'm going to prepare a place for you. I will come to receive you to myself. So he says, for we say this to you by revelation from the Lord, we who are still alive at the Lord's coming, will certainly have no advantage over those who are who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, right? The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Now notice the term himself. Why is he saying that? Jesus is coming back for his church. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Is this not the promise that Jesus said? I go and prepare a place for you. I will come and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. And then what did he say? So that where I am, you will always be with you. Where I am, you will be with me. So this event here is not the second coming. Remember, we've already read what's going to happen at the second coming. We're going to get back to that. But in other words, at the second coming, this event is not happening right here where we meet the Lord in the air. In other words, this event here, okay, 
This event is Jesus coming back from the church. Now, I'm going to get more into that because I think it is a blessing for us to know, too. It's going to really, as Paul said, comfort one another. Well, stay tuned. We're going to comfort. We're going to do some more comforting, okay? So don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome, and I will see you in the next video.